Welcome to Sections of the Cipher Tutorial. Today we'll be talking about query aggregations and other functions that Neo4j provides in the Cipher query language. In this section, we'll talk about various aggregation capabilities, formatting data, case and other logic statements, as well as begin to look at profiling queries uh, using a profile and explain parameters that Cipher provides. In this first video, we're going to talk about aggregations. We'll look at how can we aggregate data, which means we'll look at individual records, combine them, perform a little analysis, and end up with a single result. We'll look at count, counting distinct records, performing a few mathematical operations such as sum, average, min, and max. We'll calculate standard deviation, and we'll collect individual records across a result set into a array of data. To begin with, we'll look at our Neo4j database and we'll start with a blank slate. We'll make sure we have no records and then we'll load a and then we'll load one of the data sets provided by Neo4j, the movies data data set. This will look an awful lot like the data we've been looking at for the six degrees of Kevin Bacon problem, but it'll have a, a fuller data set, more more actors. Uh, you'll see them as persons. You'll see movies, you'll see a few various relationships within this data set. To load the data, begin in the Neo4j browser. And you can offer a shortcut command called play movies. What this does is it provides a mini application or a, a little graph of database that you can install. So you click on the data, it provides a lot of cipher statements. Press play, and you'll see it'll load the data. Perusing the data, we can quickly see that we have movie nodes and we have person nodes. When we look through, we can see a person has acted in, so that's one of the relationships, acted in. Look at the movies, we'll see they have movie titles. I clicked through the browser, clicked on the movie node, the movie label, and you can pick the display attribute for the browser. It's convenient, so I'm showing you the title. You can also see a person has directed a movie. Looking on the left, we have other relationship types, reviewed, wrote, produced, follows, directed. For this exercise, we'll be focusing on the acted in as well as the directed relationships. Now that we have the data loaded, we can start using some of these aggregation functions. First, we'll start with a count. Here we can answer some questions such as, how many persons acted in a movie? So we can start with the movie A Few Good Men. We can find the persons that acted in the movie, and we can return all of them. Let's write a little cipher. When we enter the cipher, match the movie. First, we'll be finding the movie A Few Good Men. With M maintains the context of that node and the variable n, then we can use the acted in relationship cipher, and we know this is a directional relationship because, and we'll start right, from, right to left in this case, logically, the person acted in the movie. And then we'll return the movie and all of the people. Here you can see there's approximately 12 persons, there are 12 persons and one movie. We can see that Aaron Sorkin acted in and wrote the movie, interestingly. Now, if we wanted to change some cipher to use the count construct, we can start with the same movie. Now we'll use the count construct to count how many people acted in this movie. We'll modify our query a little bit, where we can match the movie find the people who acted in it, and we'll count them. Now here we won't get a graph result of the people. Instead, we need to look at our rows in the browser to see the actual result set. Since we returned M as the reference to the movie node, and then the count in this case is 12. If we wanted to count how many people were in that movie only, we can take out the movie node variable m from the return statement and just get the count of 12. Next, 
We'll get some mathematical analysis using the min, max, average, and sum statements. Now, each of our movie nodes has an attribute of released. We can write one cipher statement to show the min, max, and average released dates from these movies. In the cipher browser, we'll start our query, we'll match all movies, and we'll return the minimum released date, the maximum released date, and the average released date. And across the data set, we can see the first movie that was released was released in 1975, the latest was released in 2012, and the average is 1998, about a quarter of the way through 1998, so early April. Now, averaging dates in this case doesn't really make much sense, but here we get to show the mathematical aggregation functions that Neo4j provides. If we want to find out the average age of the actors within a movie, we can use the same constructs. We can find the persons that acted in the movie like we did before, but instead of returning a count of those person nodes, we can now perform some mathematical calculations where we can subtract the person's birth year from the movie released year to get their age at the time the movie was released. Here we'll start with a few good men again. We'll find the movie node, we'll find the person nodes in that movie, and we'll return the minimum. So we'll find the youngest actor from the movie, the average age of the actors in the movie, and the oldest age of the actor in the movie. And here you can see the youngest was 21, the oldest was 55. There are a few other aggregation functions for numbers that exist within the Cypher query language, including sum and standard deviation. Again, in the movie dataset, adding up the years the movie was released and finding the standard deviation of the movies released isn't totally practical, but we can show off the functions. Back in the browser, we'll find all the movies. We'll return the sum of the release date of the movies and the standard deviation of the movies. Next, we'll look at a slightly different kind of function called collect. The collect statement collapses rows in a result set into a single list. This can be helpful in a query where we're finding all the actors in a movie. First, let's find the movie A Few Good Men again. We'll return the title and the names of all the actors in the movie. Now, if you look at the result set, you'll see the title is repeated many times. And for each row in the result set, we have the same movie repeated and a new name of the person who acted in that movie. Imagine you're running a query and you're returning 400,000 rows in your result set. You would be duplicating your data, you would be returning a lot more data over your network. So we can simplify this a little bit. So we can now collect the names of the actors into a new field. This field will be called names. And you can see our result set has all the same information in a much more compact format. So again, the collect statement combined multiple rows in a result set into a single array.